right, ladies and gentlemen, so today we're going to go over our G major and our D major scales in the altissimo register for alto sax. These scales only differ by one note. We have a C in the G major scale and a C sharp in the D major scale. So I'm going to blaze through the rest of these major scales over the next five to seven days because there are some other things I really want to get to. So long story short, I'm going to be uploading a lot of videos very soon. Okay, so let me start in the altissimo register with the C natural that I use to play this scale. So for altissimo C, in this case, I use the E flat key by itself. I call that minus one, and then I add the side E. E flat key and side E, that's the fingering that I use for altissimo C. It is beautifully fluid because E flat key by itself is the fingering that I use for altissimo B. I usually have one of these fingers covered to stop that note from writing up sharp. But in this case, I won't necessarily do that. I can't keep either one of these down when I get to the altissimo C. So I'm going to use my embouchure to make sure that this E flat key to play altissimo B doesn't write up too sharp. So from altissimo B, altissimo C, and then I go to the front key, holding those other two fingers down to play altissimo D. Okay. So let's review the rest of the notes in the G major scale in the altissimo register. So for altissimo F sharp, I like to use one, three, and four. This makes it very convenient for me to go to one, three, and six to play altissimo G. You can also use one, three, four, and the side F sharp key to play altissimo G, but it puts me in a little bit of an awkward position, not really to get to altissimo A. So let's try altissimo F sharp to altissimo G. Piece of cake. So from altissimo G to altissimo A, a lot of people like to use two, three, four, five, and six. I call this a vented D because it's just like middle D, but you vent the first finger. I don't like to use this fingering. I like to use a vented G sharp, just like G sharp, but you vent the first finger. You don't really need the G sharp key, but it really, really helps with the intonation. Two, three, G sharp key to play altissimo A. And of course, we have the octave key down for all of this. Okay. And then we get to our altissimo B like I showed you. E flat key, add side E to play altissimo C, add the front key to play altissimo D. And then to play altissimo E, I use the five key. This is a very convenient way of playing altissimo E. You can play four, five, or six, or some combination, but because my finger is in this position, five is the easiest to get to. So going to the five key is very convenient because of the position that your hand is in using the side E. When I get to altissimo F sharp, palm D, and side E. On tenor, I usually leave the five key down, create some stability. On alto, not really. You don't really need to keep it down on either saxophone, but it does create some stability. Okay? And then from this position, boom, two and three to play double altissimo G, which really is just a vented G, just like G with the first finger up. Sounds like this.
piece of cake. Now on tenor, I'm used to having this three key down when I'm playing altissimo F sharp. It also works on alto, but you probably saw me use that key. You don't really need it though, but it does add some stability. Okay. Let me show you the fingering for altissimo C sharp. The pattern that I use for playing this is a little bit different from what I just showed you with the altissimo G scale. So the fingering I use for altissimo C sharp, one. Just like B natural, you overblow that and you get an altissimo C sharp. From there, all you do is add your side C to play altissimo D. All right, all the other notes, all the other fingerings are the same that I use, okay? All right, so we're on our F sharp, one, three, and four. You can add the E flat key for intonation and for timbre, but it makes it a little awkward when I'm going to altissimo G, so I don't really use it in this case. And then for altissimo G, we got one, three, and six. A lot of people like to have one, three, four, and six for altissimo G. On this horn, it's a little bit low, but depending on how my intonation is, who I'm playing with, whatever, it's a nice option to have. Same fingering for altissimo A, vented G sharp, just like G sharp with the first finger up. In this case, I would keep this down and then add the E flat key to play altissimo B, just to make sure that that altissimo B doesn't go up too sharp, okay? And then from there, the one key to play altissimo C sharp, the side key, the side C, I mean, in order to play altissimo D. Sounds like this. <laughs> piece of cake. So if that altissimo B natural is a little bit low, I think it was a little bit on the low side when I played it, you can just release some of these fingers. You can just play it with the E flat key by itself. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, if you like this kind of stuff and you want to support the channel, ladies and gentlemen, you can buy me a piece of cake. I go through buy me a coffee, but for me, piece of cake. I also want to take this time to plug the next stuff that I have coming. The saxophone accessories and products videos that I've been doing have been pretty successful. You guys like that kind of stuff. So I have here saxophone risers along with cork replacement. I'm debating whether I'm going to actually tear up one of my corks or not. I don't know, but this looks kind of interesting. We'll see what happens in that video. Also, ladies and gentlemen, of course, I have my Altissimo book for tenor sax and alto saxophone that is available as a digital purchase along with some merchandise. I do have some new merchandises coming up. I got some hats and some mugs. You guys have been asking me to do some uh, some more stuff. So I want to get you guys what you want. I don't want to do this stuff where people don't want to watch it. So thanks for tuning in, ladies and gentlemen. Stay tuned for what I got coming up next. See ya!